since Norway swept the men's podium in the 2018 World Triathlon Series with Gustav Eden, Kasper Storms and Christian Blumenfeld, there's been a huge amount of interest in the Norwegians' training methods, particularly that of head coach Arald Tveiten. I'm going to make another video focusing on some of Tveiten's uh, concepts and ideas, but essentially to paraphrase it, in, in essence they do a lot of testing and they use that testing to have really focused what they call intensity control in their training. But Norway's dominance has made the likes of Lionel Sanders sit up and take notice of what they can do with targeted testing. Now in this video we're going to look at what lactate or lactic acid is and what it isn't. And we're also going to look at how you can test for this and use the results of those tests to focus your training and improve your endurance performance. So let's clear one thing up for starters. Lactate is not the bad boy of endurance sports that you may think it is. You might hear a coach say something like, okay, let's go for a short jog to clear out the lactic acid. Or you might hear an athlete say something like, those intervals were proper hardcore, I can really feel the lactic burn. Lactic acid is produced in our body system when we create energy without the use of oxygen or anaerobically. So the more intense the exercise we're doing, the more lactic acid we're going to produce. And so far, so good. This is what for years made people think the more intensity that the exercise was, the more lactic acid they produced and the more it was making their muscles burn. But it isn't. When lactic acid becomes lactate, and there'll be more on this in a minute, it actually becomes a fuel for our muscles. It is actually a very useful thing to have in our system. So why does it have such a bad reputation? Well, for lactic acid to become lactate and therefore a muscle fuel, it actually needs to get rid of one hydrogen ion. And it's these hydrogen ions that create the muscle soreness. So there is a correlation between the amount of lactate and lactic acid we have in our system and how much hydrogen ions there will be in our system also. The increase here will create an increase here. So it's a correlation between the two. It is in fact, a case of mistaken identity. Let me let a proper sports scientist explain. No, that's, that's pretty much it. I think obviously the, the preconception is that it's lactic acid, but we tend to obviously just say blood lactate concentrations. Um, right. And yeah, it is to do with the hydrogen ions, but it's harder to measure that. So we're kind of using the lactate as a, a bit of a, a guide really in terms of the profile of what's going on and when that starts to Kind of accumulate but the body can kind of produce it and use it and recycle it mm. and, and use it but clearly you're just taking a kind of little one-off measure as, yeah. a, as a bit of an indicator to give you an idea where you are really and the body does actually use lactate as, as a as a fuel it can repurpose it into atp and refuel yeah. that in the muscles so it's not the enemy that we all seem to think it is a lot of the time i think it's just a misconception in terms of you know you need to be able to produce it and it's you know it helps you if you're working really hard mm. you're going to need it there for those more intense efforts as well if you're doing right. shorter, shorter events as well um, or you're going to need the systems that ultimately produce it to work in order to provide the energy to go that, that hard so now we've established that it's a correlation between hydrogen ions and lactate in our system, it means that we can measure them. Now we don't measure hydrogen ions because it's actually easier to measure the amount of blood lactate concentration in our blood than it is to measure hydrogen ions. But because there is a correlation, the higher the amount of lactate, the higher the amount of hydrogen ions in our system. So let's have a look at, first of all, how we can test and what tests we can use, and secondly, how we can use the results of those tests. So most testing for lactate is done in a ramp test scenario where you'll increase the intensity as you go along. So for a treadmill test it might be a one kilometre increase per uh, interval and for a bike test it might be a 25 watt jump per interval. The interval lengths are, for the tests that I do, four minutes. Now the reason why we use four minutes is that it's a long enough amount of time for your heart rate to settle. Three minutes into that four minute test, we'll take a blood sample either from our ear or from uh, our fingertip, and we'll put it into a lactate reader, and it will tell us how many millimoles of lactate we have in our blood. Now the millimoles are per litre, but we usually use just millimoles for shorthand. 
So the first thing we look for is something called lactate threshold one or LT1. Now that is the point when your blood lactate starts to increase exponentially. If you look at this data from my test at Bath University, you can see that for the first four increases from 75 watts to 150 watts, my lactate was steady at 1.1 millimoles. Then it slowly climbs over the next two intervals to 1.3 and 1.4, and they're at 175 and 200 watts, but this is still very low. This is your zone one and two and you should be able to do this for hours and hours it's long course kind of triathlon pace then at 225 watts it jumps to 2.2 millimoles now we consider that LT1 is roughly two millimoles per litre so my LT1 or the upper end of zone two for me is somewhere just below 225 watts we can find out exactly where that is by creating a chart which I'll show you in a moment the next significant number we're after is the lactate threshold two or LT2. It's also known as the OBLA or the onset of blood lactate accumulation. The reason why this number is significant is because it's the point when your body can no longer keep up with the clearance of those hydrogen ions. And at that point, at that intensity, your days are numbered. You can in fact only hold that intensity for around about 35, 40 minutes. That is around four millimoles per liter of blood. And as you can see from the continuation of my chart, you can see that I'm at 4.3 millimoles at 250 watts, which means that my LT2 is somewhere just below 250 watts. If you plot those numbers, plus what the heart rate was at the time the test was taken, you can work out what your LT1, LT2, heart rate, power, or heart rate and run pace were. So if you were to repeatedly do this test, for example, every three months, the idea is that the amount of power or pace you are running at at LT1 and LT2 should improve, i.e. I would be getting to LT2 at 275 watts rather than just below 250 watts. That would take balanced training. If I did all of my training at low intensity, I might see a shift in my LT1, but my LT2 would stay the same. If I do all of my intensity work at the very top end, you might see my LT2 improve, but my LT1 stay where it is. The idea is that through balanced training, that entire thing should shift up and I should be able to run faster. I'll put more power out before I get to LT1 or before I reach LT2. So it's very accurate. It needs repetition, it needs consistency, and it is a science experiment. So you have a lot of variables you have to take into account, both with the bike or the treadmill, the environment, even down to whether you're using fans, the time of day, the fueling that you've got. But if you can keep those things to a minimum, as you should with any good science experiment, it should give you regular, consistent data. And that's why I've always used lactate testing to see exactly where I'm at and to focus my training on whether I need to focus more on the low intensity or the high intensity the areas. And with this huge interest in lactate testing that seems to have had a resurgence recently, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about how to go about those things. Over time this season, hopefully my numbers will improve and I will do videos documenting that as I go along. I have another test booked in a month and a half's time at Bath Uni and we'll see how that correlates with both my testing I do at home and what we were doing in the lab with Dr. Robinson. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click on subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I will see you on the next video.